Hey Internet, Eric here. Well, I am finally, after teasing it and talking about it on Twitter, and I mentioned it in my community post, I don't know how fucking long ago, finally delving into the Phantasm franchise. And I have never seen any of these movies. So, and it seems like everyone I've talked to loves this film. I've had requests to discuss this from a handful of people, and it seems like I've not heard one bad thing. Um, I, I, I uh, talked to Frenzy a week or so ago, and after laughing my ass off thinking that he thought I was going to review The Phantom, Billy Zane, I figured I would finally do a Is It Worth the Hype video. So, and what it is, is basically, Is It Worth the Hype is take a movie that everyone has seen, and it seems that everyone loves it, tells me I need to see it. Granted, this is just basically in the horror genre, but I'm going to see if or tell you, in my opinion, is Phantasm worth the hype? Now, if you're new to my channel, I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes. Um, in case you haven't seen Phantasm from 1979, like me, you're watching at your own risk. Basic plot from what I'm able to get from this movie is we are following a group of three guys. Um, don't, don't remember their names. Um, a kid, his older brother Jody, and then a bald guy with a ponytail who drives an ice cream truck. Anyway, the young kid, I think his name is Mike. Mike is, he lives with his older brother Jody, and his, other brother, his older brother Jody is in town because of the death of a friend of theirs. Because, and that friend was murdered. After having sex in a graveyard, he's having sex with a, with a chick, and then that chick suddenly turns into the tall man. And then he's stabbed to death. Anyways, Mike is snooping around and he sees the tall man. He is, he's called that because he's just fucking tall. After the funeral and after everyone's left, he literally picks up the casket by himself, shoves it in the back of the hearse. So that gets Mike curious. Eventually, um, <laughs> Mike is attacked by little dwarfs that basically look like Jawas. And then... Mike, Jody, and whoever the other dude is with the ponytail, they go to investigate what's going on at the mortuary. Uh, this movie was fucking weird. Uh, first of all, let's get to the acting, though. Um, the acting is fine. I liked the kid who played Mike. Um, like I said, if that's if his name is wrong, fucking sue me. Um, he, I'm, I usually have a thing against young actors. He's not, like, super young. He's not like Jake Lloyd or, or anybody like that when they first got started. Um, he's... 12 I don't know he's fine he's likable um you believe him when he gets scared you believe him when he wants to fight like gets in arguments with Jody when Jody says stay home we you know we're gonna take care of it type of thing he's very likable older brother Jody he's likable too and I, also the dude with the ponytail like I said I don't know his name um all three of these guys have great great chemistry together I love when they're all on screen together. I love the scene where Jody and the ice cream man are just sitting there playing guitar and singing. Really cool scene that had nothing to do with the movie, but it was just friends hanging out and it was just a fun scene. All three of those guys, especially when they're together, are great. Um, the only other actors of merit is Angus Scrim. You can't really see him very well. I don't know if there's a picture of him on the other dvds not really okay he plays a tall man and he doesn't have a lot of dialogue but he's fucking terrifying he literally is just there to walk and chase and he is really they do a don coscarelli who i've only seen bubba hotep from him he's really good at making this tall man scary He's usually seen walking in slow motion. They have a, always have a creepy score play when he's going through or going through town and stuff like that. And then, on a dime, he, you see him standing across from Mike or whatever. And then, boom, loud noise, like a loud screech. And he fucking books like the fastest fucking sprinter ever after Mike. And it's terrifying. This type of fucking man, this size, chasing after this little kid. It's horrifying. So, Angus Grimm... For what he's given to do is fine. The rest of the characters, there's there's some neighbor girl and her, her grandmother who are like fortune tellers. They're awful. 
that whole scene, I know it had a purpose of helping Mike not be afraid of putting his hand somewhere. That's, that does sound disgusting now that I said that, but I understand that's the point of it. That whole fucking scene was awful. The girl was awful. The fortune teller lady was awful. It's a cringeworthy moment. Um, this movie's just fucking weird. And that's the thing. We find out because Mike somehow, they're all in the mortuary. And Mike finds out that, how do I say this? No, before that, they're in this great car chase. You know, shotguns going, this and that. The bad guy's cars crash, and the inside is one of these dwarfs. And like I said, they literally are dressed like fucking Jawas. They're in the little brown coats and everything like that. And they, they're, I don't know if they speak at all, but, you know, they, they, all they need is, like, the glowing, red, the glowing eyes. They look in the the crashed car and they want to see what one of the <laughs> one of the dwarves or the Jawas look like and it's the face of their buddy that was killed. So apparently now their buddy is now turned into some three foot tall creature. Fast forward to them all in the mortuary. Somehow Mike gets into the other dimension where the fucking or planet where the tall man is from. And you find out that these people that are being killed are now being shrunk down to the size of Jawas for slavery. Weird as shit. Um, makes no fucking sense. No explanation. Um, I'll say this though, with a shoestring fucking budget, this is really well done for its budget. The the green screen effects when when he's going through the other dimension, it's all red. Whoop de do. You know who cares? You know Luke George Lucas could have done the same thing, but for a budget that didn't have anything i think he rented i think don coscarelli rented the equipment on a friday they returned it on monday to save money or rental fees or something like that the fact that he was able to get that car chase out was fantastic that car chase when they're chasing or being chased when they're chasing they're, they're being chased by a jawa i guess you would say and jody is shooting you know he's shooting bullets at it this and that crash boom great explosion and for a fucking budget of zero dollars looks great um but like I said, it's just so fucking weird eventually th there's a scene where mike is chased by the tall man he gets away and he slams the door shut tall man has like his fingers sticking out of the door and mike cuts the fingers off keeps one of the fingers because why the fuck not shows it to jody and it's still moving eventually it turns into this weird fucking fly creature that flies around gets stuck in mike's hair and they, they catch it i don't remember if they kill it because I was kind of checking out because I didn't expect this much of weird shit. Um, and then the ending. I was very disappointed. I mean, I know there's sequels. There's five of these fucking movies. I was kind of disappointed in how the tall man was taken out. He was just defeated. I won't say how. And that's it. Then we get the ending. And it's a great jump scare ending before the credits. But let's just say what was explained, how the story was explained, was kind of a fucking cock tease. And I was so mad. I was so mad at how the how everything that happened was explained. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the movie yourself, and then you'll 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 see what I'm saying. If you have seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What Ice Cream Man tells Mike. We'll leave it at that. I was so pissed. But that jump scare at the end got me interested in seeing where the story is going to go. Um, long story short, this is, is it worth the hype? Which means everyone says they fucking love this movie. Is this worth the hype for me? Sorry, but Phantasm was not worth the hype to me. I, overall, I enjoyed the film. But it didn't blow me away. I don't think it's a masterpiece like some people say. I don't think it's fantastic like some people say. I think it's a way to kill 90 minutes. And I'm, I'm sorry. but And that's a movie that has some good acting, some likable characters, some weird shit. But sometimes the weird shit gets a little too weird for me. And that fucking end explanation still pisses me off. The fly was weird as shit. I hate the chick and her fucking grandma. Um, let's make them dwarves. I, the, the simple explanation was because of, I think, the pressure and the heat. So they have to be shrunk. That's fucking dumb. But overall, did I like the film? Yeah, it was fine. 
am I gonna like go out and buy like the Blu-ray of this? Nah, I got my money's worth by my friend uh, Steve sending this to me. So do I regret watching it? Absolutely not, but I don't get the hype for it. Is it worth the hype? No. Sorry about that for anyone who really was hoping that I would love this movie, but I will say this, I am going to review the rest of the series in the franchise because even though that fucking explanation pissed me off, that very last thing we see at the end of the movie has me interested in where this is going to go. And uh, I've heard, uh, to steal a line from my buddy Knight from the Night Watch Zone, peaks and valleys. Peaks and valleys. So, anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. Comment below. Tell me if you really love this movie. Why? If you hate this movie, why? Am I talking out of my ass and you don't believe a single word I'm saying? Please tell me what you disagree with. Um, that's I got other things planned. Uh, watch party of Howard the Book Duck this coming weekend. I am going to throw in some uh, more vampire movie uh, discussions while I go through the Phantasm series. Um, interview the vampires coming up. And some other shit thrown in for, for good measure. Um, that's it. Love y'all. Blah, blah, blah. The usual stuff. Cheers.